media recognition from Bloomberg, Reuters, recycling trade publications, patented process for 100% recovery of critical metals, including cobalt, lithium, nickel, manganese, aluminum. American Manganese is focused on recycling lithium-ion batteries for electric vehicles. American Manganese trades on the TSX Venture, AMY, the US, AMYZF, and Frankfurt 2AM. For more information, visit AmericanManganeseInc.com or phone me, Larry Ray, at 778-574-4444. You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca, Canada's first online financial news and research service, providing insider news and knowledge to investors. His website, CanadianInsider.com, home of the Canadian Insider Club. Welcome back to the show. Jim, thanks for having me back, and thanks for everyone uh, for spending um, part of your time with us. Ted, what's going on with Canadian Energy? Well, we released our June Energy Top 30 report today, actually, the day that we're uh, t- um, recording this, which is a Thursday on the uh, 23rd of uh, June. And basically, we titled it Starting the Summer on the Edge, and the edge of a bear market for energy. And when we wrote the report, it was only a few basis points away from a bear market. And as of today, you know, the, the stocks have fallen more. So uh, we're, we are we are in energy bear market in Canada. It happened very quickly. It, it dropped from its peak uh, from July 8th, uh, more than 20%. And so it's, oh, no, is it over? Oh, no, right, it, it's done. Well, let's uh, try and put this uh, in perspective. As of yesterday, now this this will be out of date, but as of yesterday, the, the energy stocks in Canada were up 64% over one year. So uh, it's still uh, pretty much intact in terms of, I think, the longer-term trend based off of a technical uh, trend. Now, I'm not a technical analyst. Um, there may be other technical analysts out there that have a different take on it, and that's fair enough because uh, that's definitely not uh, my forte, but... Basically, even after the shellacking, uh, I believe the energy uh, index was down about 7% today, um, which I think is a bit ridiculous, but that's another story. Um, it's still uh, above its 200-day uh, uh, moving average, um, which as of yesterday was 12.68 uh, on the XCG. That's the uh, cap, uh, TSX Energy ETF. Uh, I'm just using that as a proxy for the index. And today it closed, I believe, at... Thirteen dollars and ninety nine cents. So still well above the two hundred day. Okay, but what are the insiders doing? Well, the insiders in Canada have been buying primarily the dip uh, here, and you know, and when you think about it, uh, I can understand perhaps kind of why they are. Because when you look at the cash flow that's being generated by these companies, when you look at the valuations of these companies. Uh, you know, you look at them and you would go, why would I sell that, right? And, well, okay, uh, let's put the bearish case out there. Jerome Powell and the Fed are out just trying to destroy oil and gas demand. They're trying to destroy demand for everything. They want a recession. I mean, I mean, if you believe Jerome Powell, and lots of people do, lots of people in the market do, especially in the bond market, um, bond investors still give the Fed credibility, even though they screwed up royally on housing a decade ago. Like, they totally blew it, like, in, two, in 2006, 2007, 2008. They got it completely wrong, nearly put the global, nearly drove the entire financial system in the world into oblivion. But the Fed still had credibility coming out of that because, oh, they rescued everything with QT, QE, sorry. Okay, fine. Then they got this inflation story wrong, the transitory story completely wrong. But... Apparently, the bond market still gives their own power credibility. They still believe inflation is going to be, you know, two and a half percent over the next five years. Jim, do you know what the bond market was forecasting inflation would be in uh, in 2018? What the inflation would be this year? It was for- forecasting 1.7 percent. That's what the bond market was was forecasting five years ago. Okay, so every time I hear somebody say, "Oh, the bond market is the truth market," "Oh, the bond market never lies," no, the bond market is something you should ignore if you're looking to get a forecast on inflation, if you're looking for a forecast on just about anything. The bond market 
is not your friend. The bond market just does its own thing, okay? And so the bond market right now is saying that, you know, basically once you get out five years, everything's going to be fine. Okay, now if you believe that, then of course that's uh, you would adjust your portfolio strategy accordingly. Okay. I, for one, do not believe that. Okay, that is my opinion. But what do the insiders say? Well, the insiders, in terms of energy, they buy the dips. And, you know, yeah, we've seen some insiders selling, you know, on the way up. But, you know, of course they're going to take some profits along the way. I mean, this is the same industry that had negative oil two years ago, right? So, of course, there's going to be some people that need to buy a house, need to, you know, they want to, like, pay down some debt or whatever, right? Of course, you're going to have some some profit taking. But the question is, why would there still be any insider buying at all if everything is about to go off the rails like Jerome Powell is suggesting? Well, the thing that I think that Jerome Powell is doing, he's playing a dangerous game uh, when he gets up to Congress and he says, yes, we might have a recession because he knows that that's code for the bond market to say, oh, oh, they're going to stop. They're going to they're going to cut rates soon. Right. Because if you're going to recession, we're going to be cutting rates. Right. So the bond market's getting all excited this week about, oh, well, maybe the Fed's going to stop cut, stop hiking rates soon. OK, I think that that is just complete insanity to think that. And. There, uh, there is a, a really good interview that I would encourage uh, everyone to uh, who has uh, you know the time and the interest who's uh, concerned about this uh, to uh, watch uh, on Canadian Insider uh, dot com because it is uh, free. It's on our uh, crypto uh, crypto video uh, stream, so that's a free stream, and it's from uh, it's from Blockworks, and it's with economist uh, Vincent De, De La Rue saying the bear market has only begun. Now, uh, just to put this into context, uh, I would not call uh, Mr. Delroad a perma bear. I am not a perma bear. In fact, I think Jim. I think if people go back to our discussions on uh, about energy for the past year, you know, we've been pretty upbeat on it, and uh, that has worked out quite well. And but of course, uh, now we have the Fed trying to slow things down and. Uh, trying to sort of convince the market, I guess, get them to think that rates are going to kind of peak here at whatever, 2 and 3 4%, because why? what's in it for the Fed to engineer that kind of a thought process? Well, because then they think that everybody will rein in their inflation expectations. Jim, they want you to start thinking that, oh, well, you know, uh, the price of that sandwich down at the coffee shop just went up to over $10, but that's it price of that sandwich isn't going to go up anymore because, well, you know, Jerome Powell says a recession's coming, so, you know, maybe that price of the sandwich might actually go down next year, right? Like, that's the, the, the little game that the Fed is trying to play, but it's not going to work. Not if you believe in history, because never, uh, as uh, Mr. Delarue has pointed out, never in history, you know, does the, the inflation cycle end after, you know, a handful of rate hikes, and it doesn't usually end when the Fed, you know, doesn't it doesn't even have to raise interest rates into positive territory in, in in real terms in the short end, and we are nowhere near that. You know, we are still deeply negative in real rates. That is, like the inflation rate in the United States is over eight percent, and the current overnight rate is under two percent. Right, so eight percent minus two percent, six percent. You know, real negative rate. Right minimum, right? It's it's at least that negative, if not more negative. So this whole narrative in the in the market that everything is, you know, heading for recession so the Fed can, st- you know, that interest rates are nearly peaking, we'll see. We'll see. I don't, I'm not buying it, but the bond market today is buying it. Uh, we'll see. They think that the commodities have peaked. Um, you know, apparently, you know, uh, copper now, no one needs it anymore because it's going to be this global recession. And, um, you know, the energy transition is off the rails. And maybe there is some truth to that because the Biden administration has been so incompetent in kind of spinning that out. And uh, I don't say that lightly, but, you know, really, um, you know, when we've got, we get, we, we hear the, the Biden administration talk about, you know, that there, that, you know, the, we're simply just going to have these energy companies pivot into clean energy that they, that they can go and they can like pump up their their production. But then if they should just pivot in five years to clean energy. Okay, well, where are we going to get the graphite to build? You know, where are we going to get the, the, the cobalt? Where's all this going to come from? You know, and we don't have any vision from the Biden administration on any of that. We have we have these sort of we hear we have these uh, little uh, you know. 
press releases and we have John Kerry running around as, as uh, Doomberg would say, you know, spitting out uh, platitudes uh, all over the world about how important uh, clean energy is. But where's the strategy? You know, how are we going to, how are we going, the, the IEA, the International Energy Agency, just came out today with a report showing how much we're going to have to increase cobalt how much we're going to have to increase gra- uh, 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 graphite. And these are, like, we're talking double, triple uh, the, the, the current production levels. Where is this going to come from when we have when we have the European Union and other regulators, you know, still debating whether lithium is a toxic substance? You know, you've got, on the one hand, you've got politicians saying, oh, how we have to increase uh, our, our, you know, our, our clean energy. And on the other hand, they've got the regulators are trying to stop it. So it's, you know, we, we, we're in this dysfunctional um, world in the, amongst the G7 where we talk a good game, but no one's willing to courageously move forward to, to make these things happen. So what does that mean? You're going to continue to have restricted supply of copper. You're going to have continue to have restrictive supply of cobalt. So that is not deflationary because they are still moving ahead with uh, promoting EVs and and you know uh, getting more and more uh, EV cars on the road. And these cars will need to have these precious metals. So and not precious metals, these critical metals. So. You know, there is going to be continued uh, demand for these metals. There is not necessarily going to be a lot of increased supply. We will see if that delivers the big uh, deflationary impulse that the market is pricing in here. So, uh, you know, I'm a skeptic of this move, but it is very painful for the commodity uh, gang. Um, and, you know, we probably have more pain along the way here. Uh, but we'll see. Today was a pretty brutal day for um, those who are long commodities, and you know it. It we'll have to just now see how that plays out. For those who missed the rally, you know, uh, and now are wondering whether they should get in. I think it really depends on your view. Whether you think the oil price is peaked, whether you think the oil price is you know heading back down. Um, to the levels that Joe Biden would like to see it get to, so you know they can get reelected, uh, which it's going to be hard. But you know there there is going to be a I think a concerted effort by policymakers in the U.S. to try and keep the oil price down artificially or whatever. Or if you want to argue it's fundamentally fine, they want to keep it down, okay, until November. So can they do it? We'll see. But uh, if you believe that the supply and demand fundamentals are still good for energy and you don't believe the um, the uh, the doomsday kind of uh, scenarios that are being put around in the market about the you know the we're, we're heading for a recession so uh, all these commodities uh, are going to be uh, in, in less demand well then we're going to have buying opportunities probably throughout the summer so you know I don't think there's any rush um, we're going to have this continued onslaught of negative central bank talk. Um, the uh, you know we called it the sledgehammer um, uh, summer uh, <laughs> market and it's turning out to be that way that was the title of our top 40 report so you know uh, Jerome Powell came with his sledgehammer um, it's all talk very little action but he's gotten away with it he, he's he did a very effective job at clobbering the oil price um, uh, just you know through his testimony and the lead up to it you got to give him full marks for that um, we'll see if it's sustainable. There were obviously some speculators that got washed out, and that comes with the territory. Um, but you know, when I look at what the cash flow, I mean, these 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 Canadian oil patch companies, you know, they haven't been using the the big difference between now and and say ten years ago was when you had a, a, a commodity impulse. Ten years ago, you would go to your banker and you'd say, "Okay, well things are great. You know, uh, how big of a credit line can I get to you know." drill all these wells. That's not what happened this run. It was just the opposite. It's like, oh good, we have all this cash coming in. We can pay down our, tr- our, our debt. We can, we can reduce our debt. There's companies on the oil patch that have no debt or that they're, you know, they're striving to get to one, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, one, you know, one EBITDA to one you're right, in terms of their, their, um, their, their sales. So it's, um, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's quite, it's quite a remarkable uh, change of events uh, that we've seen in the oil patch, and um, 
it's uh, it's going to be something I think uh, to play out in in the summer, and uh, we will uh, we you know we'll we'll just have to see um, in terms of uh, how bumpy the ride gets here. But um, yeah, it uh, I think it's uh, it's going to turn it's going to be a um, it's going to be a very a very interesting uh, summer uh, for sure to uh, uh, to to watch and. Uh, uh, yeah, let, let's, let's just see how things play out when it comes to this, uh, the American economy, whether there is this demand destruction that everyone is, is seemed to be worried about. Um, uh, I think that, um, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, it's, I don't want to say we're, you know, we're, I, I, I don't want to say it's overdone. I mean, it's overdone in the short term. Uh, we could have some more headwinds over the summer, but I, I just don't see, um, I don't see if you're if you're if you were bullish on on energy um, a few weeks ago. Uh, very little has changed, except that uh, interest rates in the U.S. are going higher. There will be some demand destruction, but um, you know how how much and whether it it is it is um, reflective, you know, and justifies the moves we've seen over the past few weeks. Um, I think. That's debatable. I'm skeptical. I still think, you know, over the longer term, uh, the energy bull market is intact, and the Fed is going to have to make a choice within a year whether it accepts higher inflation or whether uh, it's going to uh, crush the economy for real and drive down demand for real, and that would mean significantly higher interest rates on the short end. And I'm not talking three and a half percent. You would need to have you would be talking six, you know, percent, five, six percent, assuming you've got an inflation rate still in the four or five percent level, which I think isn't entirely possible given that core inflation, uh, it, it seems to be quite strong now. So you can't blame all this inflation on food and energy. It's actually embedded in the core. So this is going to be a difficult tiger for the Fed to tame. We're going to have to see though if they really, um, if they really decide to clobber the economy and if they do, if they really, if they start to bring overnight interest rates into real positive territory, then I think the energy bull market will have significant headwinds at that point, significant long-term headwinds, you know, but at this point, it's a shakeout, it's, uh, it's a game, I think, that the Fed is trying to play to, to maximize the uh, demand destruction by, but through the least amount of heavy lifting possible. So it'll, it is going to be a, a battle of wills, I think, over the summer, Jim. We'll have more with Ted Dixon right after this. Don't miss out. Stay informed. Receive the HowStreet.com weekly recap with thought provoking podcasts, radio, and articles delivered to your inbox. Sign up for the HowStreet.com weekly recap on our homepage at HowStreet.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Ted Dixon. Ted, U.S. mortgage rates are still climbing. Uh, they're now officially at 5.81%. Some lenders there charging more than 6%. What's that going to do to real estate markets, not just in the U.S., but uh, Canada always echoes what happens in the U.S.? Is that going to happen here? Well, you have so many... Uh real estate experts on on house street I, I really don't feel i should kind of wade into that territory one thing one observation i would say is i think the housing market in vancouver and toronto is, is different from many housing markets in the rest of north america i think there's different drivers there i think money laundering um capital flows are big drivers in that area and so long as governments continue to turn a blind eye to that and welcome um, uh, capital flows and money laundering into this country, then, you know, there will be a bid, I think. So, um, I, I don't know how much, uh, interest rates, you know, and given that I don't think, uh, the Bank of Canada is going to be very serious about tackling inflation, they're going to talk a tough game. We'll see. I mean, I hope I'm wrong. I mean, now there's talk about them having to move 1%, and I think they do have to move 1%. Any, any central bank that's serious about inflation wouldn't be it wouldn't be fooling around like both the Fed and the Bank of Canada and the ECB are, right? Like, this is just a joke, right? These guys they're, and gals, they're just trying to talk a good game and, and doing, doing as little as possible. So in the terms of the U.S. housing market, though, 
I can't really talk to the housing market. I can talk about the the forest products companies mm-hmm. in Canada that service the housing market. And again, we're seeing positive insider activity there. Because yes, new home sales are part of the equation, but there's also restoration. Uh, there's also, you know, the housing stock falls apart after a certain amount of time and it ha- stuff has to be fixed. There's also an infrastructure move in the U.S. Well, guess what? Lumber can work as as carbon capture. You know, it does carbon storage. You build something out of lumber. It has it has positive climate fighting, the climate change fighting attributes. So, I think the death of the lumber products company is you know <laughs> is way too premature here. And yet again, you know, these these stocks have all been hammered over this demand destruction narrative. Um, and I just don't see the U.S. economy rolling over as easy as Jay Powell is saying. I do not just see the, you know, the the housing market or any market basically in the U.S. rolling over just because the Fed is going to raise rates next meeting to two percent, right? Like I just don't see that. Now, I could be wrong, right? The insiders we look at, you know. Um, uh, the, the 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 signals that we're seeing, maybe we're misjudging them. Be totally wrong. We could be, you know, the the and you know, there's all sorts of talk. Is the U.S. in a recession? Is the U.S. not in a recession? It doesn't really matter in terms of the stock market whether it's in a recession or not, because we won't know for a number of months. What matters is what happens to earnings, whether we enter an earnings recession, and. You know, we will see. We will see how these lumber product companies do. We will see how these energy companies do. And they're right now, most of them are not pri- they're not priced for perfection at all. There's still some stocks in the market that are priced for perfection, but I wouldn't I wouldn't include uh, Canadian um, forest product companies as in that group. They're priced for doom. And uh, you know, we will see if the doom unfolds the way the market has uh, has. Uh, has uh, expected here. Um, I'm skeptical. I'm, you know, I, I think that uh, this is just another another aspect of the narrative that's developed, and I think it's a little premature to write off the U.S. housing market in general, including you know, including the renovations, the whole sort of the whole sort of uh, industry, like not just sort of the new sales, but uh, the entire. Um, market and again, it depends on your time frame. Are you talking about the next six months? Well, yeah, you know, next six months, maybe people are going to have to adjust to higher mortgage rates. It'll take their time. You're going to spend more money on a house. Maybe you're not, and you know, maybe and it's cooled off a bit, and you don't have as many people bidding, so you don't have to rush. You can take your time looking for a house. Like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like, that's the way it should be. Maybe we're just having a normal setting of the price of credit. Right, which means people don't have to rush for fear of missing out. It means they can go shopping for a house and looking leisurely. You know, you know, maybe not. You know, in terms of, you know, relative to what it's been like. Right. So that's not necessarily the end of the world, right? But you know, the bond market is excited now that we're about to go into some kind of, uh, uh, op- you know, uh, sort of an apocalypse, economic apocalypse. That the Fed is going to have reverse course, and soon we're going to be going back to quantitative easing, right? Like I don't think so. Well, uh, it will be a, an interesting summer, Ted. Thank you so much for speaking with us, Jim. Thanks for having me back. My guest has been Ted Dixon, CEO and co-founder of InkResearch.ca. If you have any questions for Ted or any of our other guests, you can send them to info at HowStreet.com, our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network. Find us on Twitter, at HowStreet. We're also on Facebook. I'm Jim Goddard. Thank you for listening. Comments made on HowStreet.com radio are an expression of opinion only and should not be construed in any matter whatsoever as recommendations to buy or sell any financial instrument at any time. Available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com, HowStreet.com radio is a production of HowStreet Media Incorporated.